Oh, what's up everybody? I'm Matt Gary, and on this episode of Coding with a Force, I'm gonna show you how to use the SFDX scanner plugin to allow you to automatically scan your code base for common programming flaws and for security violations in your Salesforce org. All right, guys, so just like with every other video, let me explain why you would care to use the SFDX scanner CLI plugin. Um, basically, what this tool allows you to do is do static code analysis on your entire code base, um, and it combines static analysis or co static code analysis tools to work together, which is pretty cool. Otherwise, you'd have to run um, PMD which is short for Programming Mistake uh, Detector, um, ESLint, um, and potentially other things. This combines PMD and ESLint together, so it can analyze your um, Apex and your JavaScript at the exact same time, which is pretty cool. Um, and it also includes some security rules that uh, have been recently implemented with PMD to make sure that your Apex code is a little more secure. Um, okay, so the the other reason, or the, the big reason that this is important is because, uh, you know, eventually, you, you may never have had to deal with this, um, and if you haven't, then great, <laughs> but someday you will, um, where somebody will come in, uh, whether it's Salesforce or another organization, and they're gonna analyze your code base. Uh, they're going to give you a, a a health check of the code in your organization. And if you're running these static code analysis tools and fixing these problems with every single, um, you know, sprint release or whatever cadence you're on, then you're not going to have a lot of those pop up. But if you don't look for this stuff and you're not constantly um, fixing these small programming you know, mistakes, then you're going to have somebody come in, do an org health check, and they're going to just tear your code base apart, which uh, is never a fun thing to deal with. So it is important to to use these scanners to fix your code, and, and, and on top of that, it helps you get better at, you know, following good coding practices, having a low cognitive complexity, things like that, um, making sure it's at least, uh, at least somewhat secure. Um, as well. So before I get into this, there's one important thing to know. Uh, this is a this is a static code analysis tool. It's not a dynamic code analysis tool. So while it helps identify a lot of a lot of uh, you know important things, there are, there are um, you know especially in the area of security, uh, very important things that won't be identified necessarily with this you would still need a dynamic code analysis tool like I think the most popular one these days is check marks to um, analyze your code base um, to, to pick up all that other stuff that that would theoretically be happening when your code was you know running or doing something um, not just sitting at rest and being analyzed um, alright so now that we understand, you know, why you would may, maybe want to do this, the benefits of using it, let's go on ahead and figure out how to set this up and install it. So, um, you will need to install uh, the Java Development Kit or JDK. Um, you need at least JDK version 8, I believe. Uh, anything past that will work as well. And the most recent version as of today is 15. I'll put this link in the description. I'm sure you in all likelihood to have this, but if you don't, uh, you do need to install it. Um, the other thing you'll need is the Salesforce CLI. Again, this is also probably something you have if you're here, <laughs> but just in case you don't, you do need to install it. Um, and then I just want to briefly go over the fact that this is a, <clears throat> um, uh, the SFD, SFDX scanner CLI plugin uh, does exist within the force.com GitHub repository, uh, so you can check that out. It's pretty cool, and they have a, uh, a bunch of uh, really good documentation on it that you know informs you of how to install it, um, 
how to make your own custom rules. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to make custom rules in this video. I might in a later one um, because I feel like not very many people know how to do this, but uh, it that gets pretty involved, so I'm not going to go in depth in that uh, today. But you can make your own custom rules for the scanner. You can manage custom rules, um, all that kind of stuff. And then it also has um, instructions on the different options that you can use for the scanner, which we'll briefly go over in this video as well. All right, so let's get started by installing this plugin. Um, we're going to open up Visual Studio Code. So what I have open right now is Visual Studio Code. Um, if you're not familiar with Visual Studio Code, how to use this with Salesforce development, all that kind of stuff, I have a video that goes over that and explains it in pretty good detail. <laughs> Makes it pretty easy, I think, I hope. Um, so I'll put a link to that as well, and you can go check it out. Um, all right. So we, in Visual Studio Code, there is a terminal window that you can pop up. Um, depending on your your machine, your computer you're using, uh, depends on the terminal that pops up. But for me, it's PowerShell. It might be Command Prompt or or um, something else on you know other other non Windows machines. Um, and we're going to just install this plugin. So basically, what we will do here is do sfdx plugins install at Salesforce sfdx dash scanner and what this is going to do is install the sfdx scanner as a plugin for the Salesforce CLI and as long as you've entered this command in um, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to continue forward with this because it's not a digitally signed plugin uh, for the Salesforce CLI, um, you can just enter yes. It's it's uh, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, you know now to fill the time while it installs, this might take a little bit longer for you. For me, I've already got this installed, so it's probably not going to do all that much. Um, but it'll take a couple minutes to install. And once it's done, it'll let you know that, and we will continue on. So it's telling me here that the um, the plugin SFDX scanner was installed, and it installed the 2.3.0 version. Okay, cool. Awesome. So how do we actually run this command, or, you know, how do we actually run the scanner on our code base? Well, assuming you have pulled in your code from your Salesforce org or your repository, whatever you know, model you're working off of, whether it's repo based or, or org based. Um, as long as you've pulled that code into your project here, or really it could be anywhere on your machine. It doesn't actually have to be um, in a Salesforce project. It just needs the, the code needs to exist somewhere on your desktop um, or on your computer rather. Um, once you have that, you're going to run the following command, and I'll break this down for you. <laughs> uh, so for some reason, I couldn't remember the word command at this moment in time. So I'm about to tell you that SFDX are the words that you put in to run the Salesforce CLI. It's, it's just a command. It's the command that you use in, a, in the terminal console to, to run the Salesforce CLI. Let me pull this up. So basically what we're doing here is we're saying, you know, SFDX, which is just the, you know, the, the, uh, <laughs> the words that you put in to use the uh, Salesforce CLI. Um, scanner run is the command to run this scanner. Uh, and then you do target. Uh, the target is the folder that holds a folder or the file really that holds your you know what you want analyzed so I've got a glob pattern in here that is the um, basically represents the LWC folder within my um, within my project here so basically it would pick up anything that's within the LWC folder 
Um, and then I want the uh, file to be written in a CSV format. So you have dash dash format, and you can tell it which format you want it to be in. There are several different formats that it supports right now. Um, I typically use CSV though. And then if you uh, want to be able to do, you know, something useful with the file, uh, you'll probably want to output it. So there's this out file command that allows you to output the results of your um, scan into a CSV or whatever other file type you might want it in. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'm going to run this command and we are going to take a look at the LWC violations that I have. Um, I've put some code in here that I know has violations, so it should hopefully output some real violations. And it looks like we got something, and I output it to my desktop, and I'm opening up my LWC violation CSV. And if we just expand this to take a look at things, you can see a bunch of very useful information once it runs this, um, you know, once it runs this scan. It tells you which uh, file had the problem, uh, which line it was on, what the problem actually was, and the engine that, the, the static code analysis engine that it ran. So in this case, because it's JavaScript, it ran ESLint. The other pretty useful thing that it, um, dumps in here is a URL for a lot of these that kind of explains what your problem was. So if you take that URL and bring it in here, um, it breaks down, you know, what this rule is, why, um, why it exists, all that other stuff. So you get a real good understanding of why um, it flagged you know, whatever it did flag for you. Um, let's just run this one more time now on our Apex. And I'm going to add another, um, another command that will allow us to um, get just a single category of problems. So whenever I ran this before, it output a file of theoretically everything that I had wrong inside of my Lightning Web Components. But say I only wanted to scan for security problems. You can also do um, another option for this scanner run, um, or sorry, this SFDX scanner plugin. And you can do category, if I can spell it. And say you just want to scan for security problems. You can have the category, if you have the category assigned here, um, then it will just run security problems. So let's say, oh, I can't do that in the terminal window. Let's say that we want to um, look at all the security problems in our uh, Apex, which that is the wrong folder. It would be classes. So let me just break down this one more time, SFDX. Uh, is just the command for the Salesforce CLI, so we know we're you know initiating that, or at least the terminal knows that it is leveraging the Salesforce CLI, and then we're doing the scanner run command for it, and we are targeting our classes folder, and we're making it in a format of CSV a category. The category that we care about um, is security, so we're only going to get security errors and we have an uh, output of, we'll make this apex, so, okay. <laughs> apex security violations. Okay, and then we'll hit enter. And that should output a file for us called apex security violations with all of the security violations uh, within our classes. And we can see it was output. And if we bring it up, hopefully, maybe. There we go. Um, it's going to bring up a file that you can see. Uh, every single thing in here is a security violation. 
which is pretty cool. Um, let me see if I can increase the yeah, width or zoom here. So it shows you, you know, all the different places that there were security violations. And I put some security violations in this code base to make sure that, you know, things popped up. <laughs> um, and uh, again, the other useful thing here is this URL that, again, you can drop into your browser and take a look at, uh, you know, why this was picked up and a more in-depth in, uh, explanation as to, you know, what it's expecting you to do to resolve the problem, all those kind of things. All right. So that's mostly it. I will say, just to be uh, super thorough here, if you didn't notice, you know, if I if I open this terminal window within my project um, in sales or sorry in a Visual Studio Code, you can see that my path that I'm running all this on is within my actual project. If you're not actually running these commands within your project, uh, and you try to use this uh, glob pattern classes, if uh, there's not a classes folder within whichever folder you are currently in, uh, then it's not going to return anything. So make sure that you know you have traversed to whatever folder you want to actually check out um, you know your your apex code or your basically your code base and, and write these violations or find these violations in um, okay that is one thing I want to go over that I know I didn't cover earlier it is important that you you get into that folder um, if you don't know how to do that you know feel free to reach out to me and I'll, I'll explain that to you but again if you open this up in Visual Studio Code uh, you shouldn't have that problem. You should be able to just run it like this as long as your project is set up. All right, guys, um, that is it. Hopefully this made it a little easier to use this tool. Hopefully you understand why you would use this tool, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, please feel, 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 feel free to reach out to me either in the comments or you know wherever else. Um, I'll be sure to respond to you and um, if you like this video make sure to subscribe I try to make at least one or two of these videos every week and uh, yeah thanks for watching guys I'll see you next time